Today we will reflect on the simple question, are the QAnon beliefs compatible with Christianity? Does QAnon lie? Does QAnon slander? Well, to answer that, we first need to define exactly what QAnon is. Wikipedia explains it best. QAnon is a far-right conspiracy theory that alleges that a cabal of Satan-worshipping pedophiles is running a global child sex trafficking ring and plotting against uh, President Donald Trump, who is battling against the cabal. Q of QAnon has accused many liberal Hollywood actors, Democratic politicians, and high-ranking officials of being members of the cabal. Q also claimed that Trump feigned conspiracy with Russians to enlist Robert Mueller to join him in exposing the sex trafficking ring and preventing a coup d'etat by Barack Obama, Hillary Clinton, and George Soros. Now, of course, some of the details of that accusation have indeed proved false, but the fact that George Soros is involved proves that the QAnon conspiracy is true. I mean, don't wealthy Jews control everything in the world? I once had a well-educated Christian friend ask me, why don't Democrats want to combat child abuse and pedophiles, and my response was, come again? How absurd! Where did you get these absurd ideas? Well, QAnon is starting to feed into the internet chatter and Fox News and the far right-wing fringe TV and internet shows. The accusation that Democratic or Republican leaders and Hollywood stars has had this secret cabal trafficking young children makes no sense and is explained only by the possibility that QAnon thinking is infiltrating the Christian world and Fox News and the rest of the right-wing nut media outlets. Granted, the Jeffrey Epstein case is disturbing, and it is astounding how many of the rich and powerful he roped into his orbit, like Donald Trump, Bill Clinton, Prince Andrew, and even Bill Gates. And I might add that it makes sense that Trump broke with Epstein after many members of his country club complain about Epstein prowling after their teenage daughters. We want to direct you to our blog on QAnon, which has the many links that we referred to in this video. And I'm not going to repeat what many of these links say. It's going to, the exact contents are going to change with time. So, let's dive into it. Now, some people may say, QAnon is gone, QAnon has posted in months, and anyway, QAnon is not that bad. The moral issue here is not so much about QAnon, but how conspiracy theories like QAnon can be very harmful. Uh, the real question is why QAnon has taken hold. I'm not going to answer that question directly. It's answered in many resources that I've referenced, and more theories about this will be posted in the months and years to come, I'm quite sure. Now, during the past five years, we've been living in a dystopian world that is oddly like that described in the science fiction horror movie, The Invasion of the Body Snatchers. In that movie, planet Earth is invaded by aliens that are a race of gelatinous creatures that first invade the plant life in the cities. These plants run filaments to humans at night while they sleep, through which they spawn a rapidly growing clone, identical in appearance and gait to their human host, and then killing and disintegrating their human host before they awake and when they are done. Very few humans notice this body snatching that expands exponentially. The body snatch clones march in the same direction and in total conformity, but when they detect a true human walking down the street among them, they bulge their eyes, point their fingers, and let a high-pitched screech, ah! like this picture of Donald Sutherland shows us. In this poll, when Trump supporters are asked whether the Democratic leaders are involved in elite child sex trafficking rings, yes, say 50% of Trump supporters. 33% say they're not sure. And only 17% affirm that no, Democrat leaders are not involved in elite child sex trafficking rings. How absurd is this? The leading conspiracy theory in early 21 is that Trump won the election leading to the Capitol riots. Now, I am not fond of issuing many purely political videos. There are many fine channels that offer valuable political commentary, but I just felt I had to do a video condemning QAnon. Because QAnon is so damaging to the Christian faith, I just wanted to raise my hand and push back and say, QAnon is just plain wrong. QAnon lies. QAnon slanders. 
Now, I did cut two videos comparing the Capitol uh, riots to aspects of Socrates' trial and unjust execution because a big lie led to the execution of Socrates. So there are similarities. And in, in this ancient event and in our modern insurrection, people died. People were seriously injured because of the big lie. And families were split apart. Ignorance enables demented conspiracy theories like QAnon. The civics education we receive in this country is wanting. Historically, the Daughters of the Confederacy, in addition to erecting Confederate statues all over the Deep South and Midwest, have promoted the myth of the lost cause in the American history textbooks over the past many decades that downplay the terrorism of the KKK Knight Riders. They deny the fact that the Civil War is fought over the institution of slavery, and they deny the brutality of both slavery and the violence of the Jim Crow system of discrimination and segregation, and the total denial of due process of law to Negroes. And I might add that many Negroes today feel that uh, they still don't have equal due process of law, that it's somewhat suspect. One of the projects of this channel is to include videos on civil rights history that can be shared with your white Christian friends or your skeptical white friends. Many blacks justly fear that every time they're pulled over by a white policeman that they need to really mind their P's and Q's lest they get shot. Many whites, myself included, have been surprised during the public debate on Black Lives Matter this past year how our black brothers live their lives in quiet fear of rogue white policemen. Prosperous blacks can now move into prosperous neighborhoods, but we keep hearing of the unlucky few prosperous blacks who are arrested in suspicion of breaking into their own homes. Or the prosperous black jogger who was murdered jogging in his own neighborhood by a white man who suspected that he might be running away from a crime somewhere. What is not justified is allowing these deep-seated fears to fester into hatred. Instead, this dysfunctional cycle must be broken by everyone consciously striving to become better people, trying to make our society a better society. We must love our neighbor, in essence. If we do not love our neighbor, then we do not love God. Now, black lives do matter. Police brutality is real. Too many black people are shot in the back by policemen. Regardless, we must remember that a primary cause of police brutality is criminal brutality. Police risk their lives literally every time they answer calls on domestic violence offenses and traffic accidents. There's very little discussion of this dilemma. And the only really intelligent discussion of this topic I've heard so far is halfway through this podcast with Chuck Rosenberg, Maya Wiley tells us of her experience as a citizen member of a New York police internal police board. And the reason for so much police brutality is that the policemen are just plain scared. And also, they're policing in an area in which they don't live, and they don't really feel a connection to the community. So, there's no magic solution to this problem. Indeed, QAnon is snatching the souls of many Christians, warns Ed Stetzer, a leading evangelical leader affiliated with Wheaton College, as expressed in his U.S. Today article, and a follow-up article in Christianity Today, which is a leading magazine for evangelical pastors and informed laymen, that warns us all. The challenge for pastors is when we will begin to speak up about QAnon. Simply put, QAnon is slanderous, QAnon is hateful, QAnon is all about conspiracies, and conspiracy theories are, by their nature, slanderous. QAnon is turning into a virtual cult. QAnon may even be turning into a weird religion. Stetzer says that some talk about QAnon as if some messiah figure is at work, like Q. Similar to the ancient heresy of Gnosticism in the early church, it lures people with promises of secret knowledge. It provides a sense of identity and belonging with code phrases like, Where we go one, we go all. Many people, including active church members, are being drawn into this heresy. Stetzer advises Christians that they need to use social media wisely, that Christians need to be discerning about what they read, that we should realize that anyone on even a small budget can generate an impressive looking website and that you should hit pause before you screed some really hateful response and anger to an internet flame war. Christianity Today also has several articles on QAnon and also a podcast aimed at pastors to advise them how to steer their parishioners away from these spiritually dangerous conspiracy theories. Plus we have a key article from Atlantic Magazine which we used as a primary source for learning about the 
prophecies of Q. Although Pope Francis has not spoken officially about QAnon, he does warn us that Christians need to be careful in his declaration, God et exultate, released in 2020, that we need to use social media with care, that what we say in social media should further love for our neighbor in both ourselves and our neighbor. And he says this, Christians can be caught up in networks of verbal violence to the internet. Even in Catholic media, limits can be overstepped. Defamation and slander can become commonplace. And all ethical standards and respect for the good name of others can be abandoned. And also, it is striking that at times, in claiming to uphold the other commandments, they completely ignore the eighth, which forbids bearing false witness or lying and ruthlessly vilify others. Here we see how the unguarded tongue set on fire by hell sets all things ablaze, oh, quoting James. And the National Jesuit magazine, America, also has many fine articles on how QAnon is misleading many Catholic faithful into spiritual danger and slander. Now, conspiracy theories and secret societies are a real thing. Communism, fascism, the Nazis, and the KKK, they all relied on conspiracy theories and secret societies to thrive. Now, Wondrium, which is formerly the Great Courses Plus, has an excellent series of courses on secret societies if you're interested in their true history. Now, there's also a lecture on the spurious elders of Zion that spreads the slander of a Jewish cabal running the world, much like the QAnon belief in a child sex and sacrifice ring running the world, which is an anti-Semitic trope just like the George Soros slanders that are currently being spread. Now, QAnon is a cult for many. QAnon is almost like a religion to many adherents. QAnon has led to multiple incidents, some involving murder and violence. The Atlantic Magazine has documented some of these incidents. QAnon is definitely slanderous. When you spread the QAnon lies, you are guilty of slander. Many Christians have been deceived that somehow it is okay to spread these QAnon lies. Whenever the right wing nut media complains about the influence of George Soros, Often this is just an anti-Semitic trope. Also, claiming that Democrats are not Christians and are going to burn in hell is another slanderous trope. So, please click on the link for our blog on this topic in the description below. This is the source for all the links that we've discussed, and we didn't even delve into any of the complexities of this topic. So, please, in this instance, the blog is the key. And please click on the links for interesting videos on other topics that will broaden your knowledge and improve your soul. Thank you.